All right, guys. So this is what we have on the bench right now. Um, I'm going to be upgrading this uh, Traxxas Corvette Stingray to the brushless power system. I've run this car a couple of times. I didn't actually do any uh, any speed checks with it because there are a lot of guys out there who've already confirmed that this truck will only do. Uh, excuse me. This I keep saying truck, but this car will only do about 25 miles an hour. So I wanted to go a little faster. So we're going to be upgrading this car. Okay. Okay, so here we go. So these are the upgrades we're going to be throwing in here tonight. Um, we have this uh, Valenium motor that we're going to be throwing in here. Uh, the 3S ESC. Um, the TQI uh, receiver. A 26 tooth. Is this a 26 tooth? Yes, a 26 tooth pinion. And according to the instructions, we need these two parts, but I'll let you know how it goes. This is part 2745, which is some three millimeter um, nylon nuts. And this is part 3725, which is a motor plate. But I'm not sure if we're gonna need both of these, but I have them and let's see how it goes. Okay, we are also gonna need some uh, counter um, countersunk screws. I believe we're gonna need some 15 millimeter countersunk screws. Actually, we may be able to get way yeah, we're gonna need like some 15 or some 12 millimeter counter uh, sunk screws. If we need the 15 millimeter, if we need 15 millimeter counter sunk screws, it, okay, if we need the counter sunk screws, that is part uh, 3179 for the stainless steel or part 2553 for the regular um, power coated screws, if we need the three by 15. If we can get away with doing this with the three by 12, that's part 2552, and I have those, but we'll see. Let's get to work. So, as I mentioned, I only got this car up to about 25 miles an hour. Um, I would assume it's about 25 miles an hour. To be honest, I only had a nickel battery in it, so not quite sure how fast my car was going, but we're gonna see. So, in order to, this is a very simple upgrade. So, first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna get this motor unhooked. So we need a two millimeter. I think this is a two or the two and a half. This is a two. So we need a two millimeter hex screw to get this motor off, to get this motor uh, cover off. So let's get this going right. Okay, so I've already taken these screwed out screws out, but just to give you guys a shot, these are the four screws you need to take out in order to get the motor plate off. You need right here, one, two, oops three and up here four so those four screws are the ones you need to do keep the motor plate off easy to access and once you do it they come motor plate comes right off so once you get that motor plate off the motor comes right out i got a little rocks underneath there from me running the car get rid of those now given the fact that um, that uh, I'm gonna be taking all of this off I'm not gonna even unhook this ESC so now we need to because we're going to be re replacing uh, the uh, receiver too we need to get off the receiver cover right here so it looks like it's a uh, one two three screws and there you go, you can see the TQ receiver. Okay, and these wires actually run up from right there. Okay. So we're gonna be unhooking this. The servo. And right now I'm not upgrading my servo. I don't think there's a need to, but maybe in the future I will. So we're gonna pull that out. This is the plug for the ESC. I'm gonna pull that out right through there. Pull that to the side. Now, we also have to take out, we're gonna need a 1.5 millimeter. I think I have one right here. Yeah, we need a 1.5 millimeter because we have to take out this antenna right here. And we should be able, this has some double-sided tape on it. We should be able to get this out. And of course, it's a little stuck in there, of course. And 
And Tractus must have used the new double-sided tape on this because this is really stuck down in there. Take that out. And now you can see we have the receiver out. Put that to the side. I may be using that in a project build for an older RC later on. So now we're gonna flip this over, let these rocks fall out that are in there. Be careful of this motor. Like I said, I could have just unhooked that motor, but for whatever reason, I am not unhooking it. Don't ask me why. So now we're gonna take off this right here. And there we go. She's stripped down. She's ready for the new upgrades. Now, first let's do this ESC. Because like I said, I wasn't, I'm not quite sure if this ESC is a direct fit. And yes, it looks like this ESC is a direct fit. So I should be able to get away with those um, 12 millimeter countersunk screws. It looks like the ones that they have in there are 10 millimeter screws. Let's see if they will go deep enough for my liking to hold this ESC in. I may want that to go a little deeper. I may want that to go a little deeper, but let's just see real quick. Let's do this by hand. See if I get a nice tight fit. And no, I do not. Because that's not grabbing at all. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to need the uh, 15 millimeter screws. Okay, so just as an FYI, I just had this laying around. This is actually a 12 millimeter. This is actually a 12 millimeter screw that I had laying around um, from something I must have put together. Not sure, but you can see if you put this 12 millimeter screw in there, you come up just a little short. If you guys can see that, you come up just a little short. So you need those couple extra millimeters and that's why you need the uh, nuts in order to tighten this down. But we're gonna continue with the upgrade. Okay, so we're continuing with this um, upgrade for the Traxxas uh, Corvette 3.0. So I needed, in order to get this to the ESC to hold in, I needed some longer screws. So. I was able to go and I got part 3179 and these are, let's see, these are three by 15 millimeter. And I also was able to get some, uh, these are actually armor screws, but some three by 16 millimeter. Okay. So it looks like the, um, three by 15, which is part 3179 is going to be perfect for doing this. So we have that in. Now we have to take part 2745 and this is the nuts to secure this on. Okay, so as I mentioned, so we're using part 2745 and 3179. 3179 gives, you can see right here, the perfect length to attach the um, ESC in. And you can see right here, I have a 5.5 millimeter to uh, tighten this up. Okay, these two nuts were a bit of a pain in the butt to get in, but you can see I have these two nuts in now. So you can see I have these two nuts in now. They were a bit of a pain in the butt to get in, but they're in. So the ESC is now mounted. So just one note, these uh, parts, 3179, are actually Phillips head. So I will most likely be ordering um, uh, the other ones. Uh, I'll list them down below that have the different head on it because, um, as I mentioned before, I don't have any Phillips head on any of my cars. Okay, so what we're going to be dropping in here first is this... Uh, 
receiver right here. So run this. Has to be run out through here. And remember, the first two channels are for steering, so we're going to plug this into channel number three. This is the servo. I'm going to put that into channel number two. So you can see now we have the servo into channel two and the ESC into channel three. So um, we are going to have to see which of these numbers coincide with the 26 tooth pinion. First, I'm going to remove this motor off of the old motor, off the old Titan, move this mount, excuse me, off the old Titan. So let's get this off. This is Okay, so to mount this motor, we need the 26 tooth. Uh, excuse me, I have a 26 tooth pinion, so we need to mount this in spot number J. So, okay, then that's going to fit like that. Now we need to let's put these to the side because we're done with those. We're going with the 26 tooth pinion. Okay, you guys can see we got this um got this mesh in here, it looks pretty good. I had to put the uh Valenium on spot J, as I mentioned, or setting J as far as the mount is concerned. And you can see it's a pretty tight fit up in here, but it fit in here pretty good. So let's get these wires run now which is good so we get these out of the way okay so you can see we have the new valenian motor installed the 3s esc and we've um we also put the tqi um receiver inside of here take up took out the tq receiver so let's plop a battery in and see what she does Sounds good. Oh wow, yeah. you actually get some ballooning in your tires. Yeah, let me see if you guys can see that. Like, you, know, right. you actually get some, I mean, I don't want to rev it too much. I don't want to pop the tire, but you actually get some ballooning in the tires on 3S. Wow. All right, so she's all buttoned up. I'll give her a test run in the morning. One pack through, and with no fans on the motor, I reached a temperature of what, like 150? Let's see what the ESC is doing. The ESC, the fan on it, which is obviously much cooler. It's about 90 degrees. So we topped out at 48 miles an hour, but I think the car had a lot more to give. I could have easily gotten at least another 5 to 10 miles an hour, but I think I need a little more runway in order to um, let the car really open up. Alright guys, Yankee RC here, and um, we've just finished uh, doing a test run with the upgrades that we've done to the 3.0 Corvette Stingray. Um, we, I've upgraded the motor to the 3500 kV Valenian motor. And I've also put in a 3S ESC. So, just an overview, the good and the bad. First, doing this upgrade was relatively easy. I'm talking maybe a total of maybe 14 screws you have to take out to, uh, to uh, do this upgrade completely. Really easy. Um, you're just snatching out the motor, snatching out the ESC, and dropping them right back in. It's a direct fit. Um, 
performance wise in my opinion this is how the car should have come from the factory um, with this 3500 kV motor in it the car really moves um, you can really feel the um, the power when you lay it down I'm currently running 3s I may actually go down to 2s just to get it a little more controllable because I'm not trying to do uh, 100 miles an hour um, but um, I do want the car to be able to punch it up to uh, 40 and potentially 50 miles an hour if I do it. Um, pulling the throttle about three quarters of the way, I was able to easily hit 48 miles an hour. So um, with 3S, the car has a lot more to give. Um, the downside, and maybe this is just me being a newbie to on-road cars, is are the tires. in that um, I've worn out my tires. I've probably only run about 10 packs through this car and I've already worn out my tires, so I need a new set of tires. So that may just be my ignorance as far as being a newbie to on-road cars. But performance-wise, I absolutely love it. The car handles like a dream. Um, with the 3S power, there is a little understeer, but um, from my knowledge of how to correct understeer in a real car, um, I'm gonna be adding First of all, I'm going to get some new tires and see if that helps um, because it could just be because my tires are worn down. But I'm going to get some fresh tires. I'm also going to add a little. Um, I'm going to add a little more weight to the front of the car, you know, to help give it a little more traction in the front. But performance-wise, the car handles like a dream. I mean, when you're coming out of a turn with the 3S power in this baby, and you know you're breaking into the turn, and then you know you um, you're coming out of that turn and you lay the power down. And it just comes and I, you know, it's, you know, it, that 3S power just kicks in and that's what I was looking for from this car from the factory. So I highly recommend if you want to go this route you can, and you're going to stick with Traxxas Electronics and a Traxxas motor, you can definitely grab this, direct bolt in um, and go out there and ride this baby and you'll see what I mean. Um, beyond that, um, there's nothing else to say. Guys, get out there and break something. See you next time. Yankee RC.